I'm sort of envy of many of my friends because every single day I go to work, uh, I'm never looking at the clock. I'm just racing to get things done continually. Uh, work method statements, um, all aspects of it. Um, the the design of the TBM, uh, and the more you get involved with it, the more interested I've become. Especially, um, like I say, with with the aspects of the design and the way the machine uh, complements your construction methods and stuff. Whereas in, in bridging. You don't really get that interface between machinery and uh, production and construction. I did a, a New Zealand certificate in uh, civil engineering. Uh, that's a two-year full-time course. Uh, and then uh, you supplement that with three years work experience until you actually issued with a national certificate in civil engineering. Uh, being from New Zealand, you have the desire to travel. So I uh, packed my bags and went over to the UK. Uh, I was fortunate enough to land a position as a site engineer with a with a tunnelling company called uh, Murphy's. I ended up bidding a, a, a big tunnelling job over in uh, the UK. It's called the Lee Tunnel. That's a 7.8 metre diameter. Uh, it's a water storage tunnel. The the main shaft was 44 metres diameter, 100 metres deep. So I started bidding this work and I started looking at all this underground aspect thinking, wow, there's some really technical, challenging uh, stuff going on here. And I, I developed a little bit more of an interest in it. Um, but once again, I was, uh, I was taking charge of the, the civil uh, concrete works, the, the liners and uh, the, the ocean outfall and things like that. Um, so I didn't, wasn't intimately involved with the tunnelling. Uh, so my, I finished up my time in the UK and uh, I went back to New Zealand and thought, well, I'd like to go and see a bit of Canada. So uh, I thought Vancouver's a great, a, a great place to stop. So one of the fortunate things about tunnelling, it's a very small community worldwide and uh, you know, everybody knows everybody uh, and they're all great people too. So fortunately when I got here, uh, I got in contact with one of my work colleagues from Hot Teeth who then got in contact uh, with uh, Flatiron because they Flatiron are a subsidiary of Hot Teeth. So I started working there um, with, with Flatiron and we were bidding uh, the Portman Tunnel. Unfortunately, we, we missed out on the Portman Tunnel and it was awarded to McNally. Once again, being a small uh, community, I knew somebody uh, by the name of Steve Woodrow who works for AECOM, who knew uh, some of the superiors in, uh, in McNally and uh, lo and behold, I ended up with a position as project engineer on uh, the Portman Tunnel. So it's an absolutely amazing project, very, very technically challenging. Uh, we've got six bar of pressure, uh, the slurry walls have been challenging, the ground conditions are challenging, it's in uh, glacial till. So it's a matrix of like clay and, and boulders and uh, the, the odd occasional potential for stand lenses. The team's amazing, we've got a really, uh, a, a, quite a young team on site, but we have a lot of uh, support with uh, more experienced guys uh, within McNally and also uh, working with some really, uh, really experienced consultants. Now that I'm in, I just want to keep getting better and keep getting stronger and uh, potentially go and do some more study um, specifically in the, in the tunnelling industry because I meet people here that uh, you know, really aspire to and you see some of the old heads in the industry and everybody looks up to them and I'd like to be one of those people.